Good morning, everybody. Good morning, my beautiful daughter, Good Dawn. Good morning, Mama. I'm so glad you're here. Yes. Uh, takes a lot to get you to television. Yes. You're not much into it. <laughs> no. no. I can invite you to Bible study and you'd go six days a week. Or a boat. Or a boat. <laughs> a fish or a boat. But get you in front of a TV camera, that's not your thing. No. But you're doing it today to lift and support the memory of your sister. Yes. And we wanted to share some good moments, some sweet moments, some happy moments about your sister. And um, one of the ways to talk about Angela has to include my mom because my mom and Angela were super, super close. Yes. And they um, they got along well and they they kind of jihad. Is that a word Granny Gilreath would have used? Maybe, yeah. Yeah, they jihad. And, and sometimes I would look at them and I'd say, well, I just, I don't agree with that. But they always kind of clicked. Yes. And um, I love that. I love that. But you know what I realized yesterday? What? I have one audio memory of my mother. And it was at Angela's house Christmas. And Angela and Siggy, when they lived at Macedonia, had recorded his mom was there and my mom was there. But I couldn't be there. I wasn't there because something was going on at home. So I wasn't there. So I have no audio recordings. With today's technology, you'll have a million audio recordings of me. I'll have a million of you. Yeah. But I have none of my mother. That one that was on a video Angela did, that's the only time I get to hear my mother's voice. Yeah. And I said, that's so sad to me because you and Mama used to sit and talk a lot. Yeah, we were close. Very close. And and you talked about the Bible and you talked yes. about God and you talked about his strength. Yes. Was there a point in time that you were like, Granny, enough, you know, enough? Or did you want more? No, I liked it. Yeah, yeah. yeah we would go sit out under the oak tree on Sunday and have church. Yeah, yeah. And, and that was so me. precious. Yeah. And there was something about Mama. Um, she believed that you treated everyone well, and she taught me that from a young age. Whether it be the uh, administrator of the company or the janitor of the company, you treat everyone the same. And Mama would often prove a point because she would, she would put herself in a situation that was not often comfortable to help people. And I'd say, Mama, you're going to get killed. Somebody's going to mug you. Somebody's going to do this. And then she did get mugged, but she didn't take herself out of that situation. She still wanted to help people. Yes. And I was like, Mama, you know, it almost cost you your life. And she said, but Sugar, I can be that guiding force that changes that person's life. Yeah. She was strong. Yes, she was she very, was. very strong. I wish that Angela had gotten some of Mama's strength because yes. she didn't. She didn't. Yeah. You know, she picked up a hitchhiker one time. Yes. Yes. <coughs> the one time. And she was scared because I think it was after she had been mugged. Uh -huh. But I can't remember what question she was asking him, but he reached inside his jacket. Oh, my gosh. And she thought that he was going to pull out a gun, and he pulled out a little um, King James Old Testament Bible. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. See, I didn't even know that story. Yeah. I didn't know that. It's when she came back to Talking Rock. Mm -hmm. It was just shortly after that, just a few weeks. And she was mugged in Canada. She was living right at the New York Canadian border and, and she was mugged because she was trying to help somebody that was homeless. And they almost killed her. And so, but that didn't teach my mother not to treat people well. Yeah, because she still picked up a hitchhiker. She still picked up a hitchhiker. I would never do that, especially in today's world. But uh, mother saw things a little differently than I do and she often saw the truth when I, you know, try to make it you know, uh, oh, but mama, they wouldn't do that. They wouldn't, nobody would hurt you that much. They wouldn't do that. They wouldn't do that. And she'd say, sugar, open your eyes. And I said, mama, you always see the bad in people. And she said, no, 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 I see the truth in people. And I said, yeah, mama. That sounds like Horace. <laughs> sounds like him. Maybe the trammel gene in them. I think it is. <laughs> Maybe it is that stubborn trammel gene. I think it is. Well, can we share a little bit about the ladies that you're doing a Bible study with? Tell me how you met them and a little bit about it's, them. Uh, Miss Jackie and Jamie is actually a lady and her nephew. Um, I met them through Jimbo Rampley who lived on the dirt road beside where I live. Uh -huh. um, I don't even remember. I guess I met him through Lonnie uh -huh. and then he ended up moving down there to Fairmount close to Jackie and that's how I met her. And um, she believes the same way Dorothy and 
Jen and Sarah mm -hmm. believes, non-denominational. Mm -hmm. Right. So we just started having Bible study on Mondays. Yeah. And um, and it's awesome. We were talking. We actually had it yesterday. Um, and she was saying, I want to start having Bible study seven days a week. You, know? <laughs> you said, I can't do that. I can and cook and do. Yeah. Yeah. She's 70. You know, I remember the day that I walked in your home and Sarah was sitting there in the floor after y'all had been working, picking a guitar and saying Amazing Grace. Do yes. you remember that day? Yes, I do. And that's when I was first introduced to what was soon to be Broken Ground. Yes. And it was your neighbor, and Dorothy has taught you a lot about the Bible, and Dorothy has shared things with you. Yes. But then you tell me you remember things you learned in Sunday school. Yeah. So it all comes back to you. Yeah. You know, if you'll lay that foundation. Yes. If you'll lay that foundation. And yeah. if you'll remember. Yeah. If you'll remember that um, His Word is true. Yes. And He always finds a way to get you through whatever you're facing. Yes, so, He does. Yeah, yeah. We have to have all of our faith in Him. Mm-hmm. Now, let's talk a little bit about, um, we're going to share some stuff of Angela. And we know she went from, um, she had weight loss surgery, and during that time, lost down to a size 2. She was losing her hair, she was having problems with her teeth and her bones and everything, but she was happy because she wanted to be thin. She wanted to be what somebody else wanted her to be. Yes. And that was her goal. And I think that's the best life's lesson we can always have. We need to love ourselves and be happy with ourselves. Yes. And um, God loves us all. It exactly. doesn't matter short, short, fat, tall, ugly, uh, big ear, little ear, whatever. It doesn't matter. God loves each of his children. Yes. And he doesn't say, I don't love you because you're not a size two. But I think that is what spiraled Angela into the situation she ended up in. Yes. She was never happy enough when she was a size in two. In her own skin. Yeah, in her own skin. She just kept saying, but I need to lose more, I need to lose more. She was living on two ounces of tuna a day and two crackers. Yeah. And mentally, that will destroy you because your brain doesn't get what it needs to survive. Yes. And so she spiraled into a, a, a terrible depression. Yes. And that happened because she didn't well mental she, illness is just mental illness. it is it is, it is. It is. yeah and, and I guess she was depressed some people are born with it some people acquire it because of life and not being able to handle situations mm -hmm. or whatever mm -hmm. I'm not sure but it's definitely mental illness. Well, and when I watched the piece that Tori did, I watched it last night about 1 o'clock this morning, actually, and she was talking about her mom had dealt with mental illness for a long time. And I didn't really realize that it was a mental illness. Yes. I just thought it was being stupid. And in I truth, didn't understand it either, I but didn't, then I ended up right dived into depression. Yes. I remember asking her all the time, I'd say, what's wrong? And she'd say, I'm just depressed. Well, explain that to me because I don't understand it. What uh -huh. is depression? You yeah, know, because yeah. I was always hyper and happy, and mm -hmm. and I just didn't get it until she did that. How did she explain depression to you? Because I I still don't understand it, but I I, I want to learn. I don't remember, but but it was weird to hear Tori when I was listening to Tori this morning, and she said, "My mother dealt with mental illness for many years." Yes, and I thought, "Oh my gosh." She really did. Yes. She really did. And then she turned to alcohol, which, which part of it. spiraled it really out of control. Yes. And, you know, nobody knew that she was drinking because even me, I would see her with ice and I'd say, what's in that cup? And she'd say, tea. Of course, Mom, tea. Well, it wasn't tea. It was whatever. And, and I just didn't see it. I, I didn't see the depths of it. But after I, I keep watching Tori's piece and I keep listening, knowing that this child went through this yeah. and um, it makes me very sad for Tori but she's so strong she's yes. her daddy's child yes thank God she has her daddy's genetics and she finds strength in so many different things so yes. I'm so thankful for that and she's in a perfect place to help because the suicide rate in Alaska is unreal it is it is suicide and drug addiction the two hardest things in Alaska yeah and alcohol I think 
yeah, alcoholism and suicide and depression. And, and thank God Tori is there. And as much as I miss her, I'm so thankful that she's making a difference in other lives. She's actually on the board of directors for suicide prevention. And she's going to be traveling to Houston, Texas soon. And she's doing things all the time to try to lift somebody else's spirits because the call she got in the middle of the night to say that her mother had ended her life Maybe she expected to get that call because she could see how her mother was spiraling out of control, but it's a call that you don't ever want to get. Right. So you always say, what could I have done differently? How could I have changed yes. it? How could I have stopped this? God's will is we cannot stop God's will. Right. So it is, it is. Now you brought a prayer something, and I want to I want to know oh, about this box. Little, Tell um, me about that. My cousin Leslie gave this to me for Christmas, and it just says prayers on the front of it. Uh huh. And it's got these little index cards in it, and you can write your prayer on one side. It's blank. Uh huh. But on the other side, like this one, it has the Lord's Prayer on it, and this one, um, to know Christ. There's just um, different ones. The glory of the Lord. Um, a heart of love. And the glory of the Lord will get you through this. Yes. We'll get us true. both through this. I yeah. can read this one, yeah. actually, if you want me to. Okay. She's going to wear glasses, y'all. i got to laugh. <laughs> my prayer thing is up on my phone over there. Uh, okay. So tell me what it is. The glory of the Lord. How many are your works, Lord? In wisdom you made them all. The earth is full of your cre creatures. All creatures look to you to give them their food at the proper time. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are satisfied with good things. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. Psalms 104. And um, I was also going to talk about, but this is just the neatest little Christmas present mm -hmm, from mm -hmm. Leslie. Hey, Leslie. Um, and you said something about the Lord's Prayer, that Granny always made you recite the Lord's Prayer. Yes, every day she would. Get, she had these little plates. I mm -hmm, think you have mm -hmm, them. Mm -hmm. One of them's got the Lord's Prayer on it, and one right. of them's got uh, something else. But yep. they hang in her um, living room, and she would get me to go over there and stand every day and read it, read yes, it, and read yes. it until I remembered, yes. until I learned it. Yeah. But um, what I just read on that, um, in Psalms 136, let's see, I should have already had it opened up. And, and see this cake, y'all? This is going with us today because we're going to go to a ball ground and have lunch. So thank you, thank you, thank you to Jack and to Fogus for loving me, for supporting me, for being there for me. And uh, that cake's going with us. <laughs> so. You know, um, we, we look around our life and we think God does have a perfect plan and he plants us where he wants us to be. And then he waters us, he nurtures us, he gives us strength. He sends us people when we're, when we're at a low. Right. He sends somebody. Yep. I think it's pretty much all of 136. Okay. It's, it just talks about, for his mercy endures forever. It says it in every um, verse. For his mercy endures forever. Psalms 136, 3. For his mercy endures forever. He's not going to change. He's not going to drop us. He's not going to dump us. To him He's going to love us forever. Who alone does great wonders for his mercy endures forever. It's all through Psalms 136. It's just a great um, thing to read. And made Israel pass through the midst of it for his mercy endures forever. It's just all the way through that, that whole Psalms 136 for his mercy endures forever. It's in every other line. I thought that was pretty amazing. Yeah. Jackie was talking to me about that yesterday. But something else I wanted to talk about was Psalms 91. With this COVID that's going around, uh -huh. so many people have it. And a lot of people, um, Miss Jackie's brother lives in Cedar Bluff, Alabama. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So we've been Know it well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, they ended up testing positive for COVID. And I said, no, we don't have COVID. Um, they just wasn't going to accept it. They uh -huh. prayed, stood on this, Psalms 91, 
And actually, there's so many people who have this ver this a sign out in the yard with Psalms 91 on it. Mm -hmm. You want me to read it? Yes, yes. Okay. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him I will trust. Surely He will deliver you from the snare of the, of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in the darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with, with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways in their hands. They shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot, because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. I thought that's pretty awesome where it says nothing shall come near, nor shall any plague yep. come near your dwelling. Yep, yep. That's pretty awesome. Yep, that is pretty awesome. That is pretty awesome. And I know so many people who lately have said, I have these symptoms, but I'm not going to be tested because I know I have the symptoms of a common cold and I'm going to get through it. And they've all gotten through it. And then wow. I know other people who, I know somebody who's been tested eight times and tested positive eight times. And I'm like... I don't want to be tested eight times, you know, so it's a choice right. we make. And so I think this verse is perfect. And again, it's Psalm what? Psalms 91. Psalm 91. So maybe um, everybody today could just say, let's read this psalm and let's share it with our neighbors. Let's share it with our friends. And stand on and it. And stand on it. And stand on it. And stand on the strength Safety of... Safety abiding in the presence of God. Mm -hmm. Let's stand on the strength of survival. And um, to anybody who has ever thought about taking your own life, I'm one of those people. Um, I thought about it. I almost acted on it, and I didn't. And I thank God every single day that he gave me the strength to not end my life. My life has a lot more to go. There's so much more that I can do for somebody else. And I said, I have yes. a dear friend in Ball Ground who's doing a mission, and I'm becoming a part of that. And I want to, I want to make a difference in somebody's life because somebody made a difference in my life. Yes. God reached down and stopped me, stopped yes. me because he wanted me to stay here. And I said, isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? Because yes. I'm still here. Yes, and I said, awesome. you know, nobody stopped my daughter. God's plan was perfect, and I have to accept that. Yes. But you know what I realized this morning? What? Do you know how many years your sister's been gone? Nine. Nine years. In my mind, it was seven, Don. Nine years. Yes. And, and today, like today it seems like yesterday. So today we're going to share some joy. We're going to celebrate, my daughter. You celebrate with ice cream to go with the cake. So we're going to do a little, very short Heart of the Home that we did at Miss Cooter Nolan's classroom. And it's Angela making this homemade ice cream. Do it with your grandkids, do it with your kids. Do it with your niece and nephews. Make this and smile and talk and laugh while you're doing it and celebrate her life. So we're going to do that, and then we're going to take a commercial break, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to share some more very special things with you today. Jerry Martin, tonight on Heart of the Home, I am so pleased I brought Angela Burgess, my daughter, to Miss Nolan's fourth grade science class, and we're going to do a simple, simple recipe that you gave me. 
Now, this is so simple, and we know it starts with Mayfield Milk, because Mayfield is one of our sponsors, and we do love Mayfield Milk. So, guys, we're going to do this very quick and very easy. The ingredients, Angela, are what? One tablespoon of sugar, a half a cup of milk, or half and half, a fourth a teaspoon of vanilla, six tablespoons of rock salt, one pint-sized Ziploc plastic bag, one gallon-sized Ziploc plastic bag, and ice cubes. Sounds simple enough. We are actually going to make homemade vanilla ice cream. Not as good as Scotty Mayfield mm -hmm. would make, but it's going to be good, isn't it? Yes, it now, Miss Nolan promised me she's done this recipe several times. So, guys, we're going to get into it now. Mm -hmm. And, Miss Nolan, you're going to give me half a cup of Mayfield whole milk. There you go. There you go. And, Angela, would you please add the sugar? One tablespoon of sugar. Okay and vanilla flavoring. You know, vanilla smells so good, but it doesn't really taste real good, does it? Until it comes out in your ice cream. Only got a fourth a teaspoon of vanilla. We're okay. measuring. Now, we're gonna put this in our bag, and do you wanna get the bag of ice ready for us, Miss Nolan? Oh, that smells good. Vanilla does smell so good. And remember, guys, one of the tricks that Miss Nolan told us is make sure that we seal our bags really, really tight. Yeah. Okay, now we have our ice, and we're adding the um, rock salt, which is also known as ice cream salt. Tell me when. That looks about good. Okay. Now, this is our ice cream freezer. Now, what about that? How simple is that? Make sure that you seal your bags correctly. Now, Angela, honey, you're the youngest and you're the prettiest. Mm -hmm. So, you are going to do what now? You're going to make ice I'm cream. I'm going to shake this bag up. You're going to make ice cream. Do you I'd do it say, over and over? Do it on the table. Like a gazillion times. Work off some frustrations. That's right. Homework troubles. <laughs> waiting for recess to come. <laughs> Now we know this is so awesome because no pans, no heat, and we're using our great Mayfield milk, right? right. This is the simplest thing you ever saw. Right. Wow. Okay, Angela, now you know I was teasing you. It's not 30 minutes, it's only five to seven minutes. Cool. <laughs> oh, it is, it's getting thick. It's, it's getting thick. It's starting to get thick. I just thought you looked like you wanted to do this for 30 minutes. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? can't believe this was ready in five to seven minutes. I know. And it really is frozen, and it smells as good it's as Scotty really Mayfield's good. ice cream because it has Mayfield milk in yes. it, doesn't it? Yeah. Let's try it. Can we try this? Wow. Wow, guys. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. That is awesome. You're my mama. Let me taste. You can do it. That's right. <laughs> now, we could add peaches or strawberries Only to eat it. Only after you, mama, not strangers. That's right. That's right. Oh, wow. Isn't it mm. great? That cool. is awesome now. Really good. This was such a simple recipe, and I am so glad Miss Nolan submitted it. Now, remember, guys, we want you to submit your recipes to us, too. Go to our website, www.heartofthehomerecipes.com. Tune in to us every week and, and send us your recipes. We love doing new things. This was a great idea. This was perfect. Guys, thank you so much, and thank Miss Nolan, and thank you to Jasper Elementary School. This has been a learning process for me. Did y'all learn something today? Yes. 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 And you learned you always tune in to ETC every Thursday night for Heart of the Home. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow. Whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. 
United Country Talking Rock Realty says it best. I'm happy as long as I can see Sharp Top. From the ground up, new home to complete renovation or remodel, we have combined the amazing workmanship of SGC groups, transforming the forgotten to the fabulous. Teamwork makes the dream work. For buying, selling, or flipping, call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside-down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ. How may I serve you? Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation 770-345-2000 or go online to georgiamtc.com. Okay, y'all, okay, we're back. That ice cream recipe was so much fun. Angela loved doing that, and it does take just a few minutes to do it. But try that with your kids. Try that with your grandkids. It's something you can do very easily in your kitchen. It doesn't make a mess. Just sit down and do it. And it's also very, very yummy. But I always buy Mayfield whole milk when you do it, and then you do oh, yeah. vanilla flavoring and sugar and the ice and the ice cream salt, so it's fantastic. Um, today we're also going to share a program when Angela came back after battling cancer and um, not only after the weight loss surgery did she, her teeth started giving her problems, her bone were, bones were acting up, her hair was falling out by the hands full. She wasn't getting the nutrition her heart needed, her body needed, her, you know, you need nutrition. You need to eat healthy and eat well and um, she wasn't doing that. She was living on the tuna and crackers. But when she came back that day, she looked so amazing and she was smiling and she was happy. And I thought, man, we have beaten cancer. And, and the two surgeries that she went through, and, and Dr. Molinari, he is just, he was an amazing, amazing spiritual guidance through the surgery because he would tell her, he'd say, we got this. You know, God's in the operating room with me. We got this. We're good. And then two days after her first surgery, she they almost lost her. And it was like crazy because you're like, we thought you had this. We thought God was with you. And then he was, he yes. was, because then she was fine. So it was just one of those little things, but never ever think that he's not with us. He is with us every single yes. moment. And I wanna read something, I don't know if you've heard this, but this is something that, um, I got years and years ago when I lost my stepmom, and uh, Mama Julie was just like the most precious, precious person in the world. And, and when I think of Angela, this is how I remember. Don't think of her as gone away. Her journey's just begun. Life holds so many facets. This earth, this earth is only one. Just think of her as resting from the sorrows and the tears in a place of warmth and comfort where there are no days and years. Think how she must be wishing that we could know today how nothing but our sadness can really pass away. And think of her as living in the hearts of those she touched, for nothing loved is ever lost, and she was loved so much. Oh, that's great. And that's perfect. That is perfect because she was suffering at the end. She was psychologically in a bad, bad place, yes. and God chose to not stop her death and um, we accept that and so today we want to share Tyler Spear was like Angela was his number one fan 
and we actually, I didn't even know Tyler, and Freddie found him um, through a newspaper article in Cherokee County. He was an up and coming race car driver, and we spent many days on the road watching Tyler race and going places and meeting people, and just, we met the Allison brothers out of Alabama, the Alabama gang. We had such a great time traveling with them, and Every time we would come back, Andrew would be so excited that we got to be with Tyler, watch Tyler race. She was just such an encourager for him. And he now does not race cars anymore, but he is number one in racing boats over 200 miles an hour. Oh, I love it. It is amazing. And so Angela, we always say Tyler has a very special angel on board with him because she was his biggest fan. And we're going to share a visit when Tyler it was me, Charlene, Tyler, Bill, uh, or Dan Elliott, Sheena Elliott, and then Angela came for a few minutes and we visited with her. She had gone through so much, but she was still smiling and still happy. And then the pain and the agony, and I don't know if you remember, but when she lost all the bone density, her legs, she could barely walk, she got herself physically to a point of no return because she just continued to lose weight and lose weight and not eat anything because she wanted to be everything that somebody would want her to be. And I'm like, Ange, you're, you're damaging your body. We need to be happy with ourselves. Yes. And we need to take care of ourselves and we need to be about ourselves and our Lord and that's it, you know. And, and so I hope that her life has been a lesson and a blessing to many, many people. Yes. And I think as Tori shares her story, it has become more of a blessing to so many people. So now, I know y'all loved her. Our viewers absolutely loved Angela. They loved that she would get me on the air. She'd run in here late or she'd have a new tattoo that her mama would see live on the air and mama would, oh no. <laughs> <You know? laughs> she did everything she could to, could to scratch me wrong. <laughs> and I would just, I can't believe you did that. But she loved it. She loved life. And, and sadly, at the end, um, life wasn't too much to love. So, But we're going to share a little bit of a visit that she made here with Tyler Spear. And again, she was his biggest fan. Here we go. Monday, everything's going to be great. Mm -hmm. We have a winner, yes. Heather Brazell, won a contest. Are there some people you want to say thank you to? Yes, but I also have a birthday. Um, okay. Jason Dorsey's birthday is tomorrow, okay. Halloween. And okay. I'm thinking he'll be <coughs> 4 0, but I'm not for sure. We, we graduated together, but I know his birthday's Halloween. Um, there's too many people for me to name every person, but Martha Poole, Sandra Daughtry. Daughtry. You know, Daughtry. Yeah. Um, so many people have sent me cards and well wishes, and I see people and they, you know, give me a hug. And I really appreciate every single person that has, you know, prayed Was for me. Was it Michelle and, Young you saw that done the other day? Yes. And I printed a bunch mm -hmm. of emails where people have been sending emails every single day wishing you well and mm -hmm. praying for you. And, and we truly know that prayers will be answered on Monday. You're going to go in, zap, flip, 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 out, out of there. You're going to recovery for right. um, the night. You'll spend the night at Piedmont Mountainside. Yes. Everything will be fine. And yes. uh, we, it's been tough getting there because you've been really sick to get there. Right. That's really been the sick. tough part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, hopefully on Monday, once um, Dr. V does his thing, you're going to be fine. It's going to be I great. Know. Snatch and grab. Take it out. There we go. And look, I'm smiling. Tyler is this. single. Yes, he uh. is single. He is single. He is available. And I have a young lady picked out for him, actually. <laughs> she couldn't be here today, though. She had to go to Dalton to take a class. <laughs> yes, he's single. Um, you have gone through a lot emotionally to deal with and you sat here with me and didn't tell me two days in advance that you had cancer. Right. You felt like I couldn't take it. Right. Being a mom of a cancer um, patient, survivor, it's tough. But let me tell you something. I have all the faith in the world. And faith will get us through this. Mm -hmm. I know that God intends on me to have you around for 40 more years to boss me. I've been the boss a long, long time. You have to get that role. <laughs> I know. So in order for you to get that role, i got to get old and decrepit. <laughs> so together, Bill says we'll, you are old. <laughs> I know. We're going to smack Bill. I love your shirt today. Thank My you. color. Your color. Your mm -hmm. color. Now let's talk about um, recovery time, three weeks, four weeks possibly? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, four weeks probably. And and to gain some strength because that's been the hardest thing. You've been so run down. Yeah, I've started the boost. 
mm -hmm. um, started that yesterday because I, I really just need right. the vitamins and stuff. Right. But um, and, and for anybody who wants a B12 shot, I give them to her. If y'all need a B12 <laughs> shot, just call me. But she freaks out. She freaks out. I'm like, Mama, please give me my shot. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, do I have to? <laughs> do you think that you will ever have control to where you, you can tell her what to do? I'm thinking when donkeys fly. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yes. someday she will take care of me. Be good to your parents. Be good to your children. They'll choose your nursing home. Right. Yeah, but I, I still see this picture, and I still see you telling her what to do. I still You're see this You're probably right, yeah. Danielle. Elliott. You're probably right. Yeah, she always be my mama. Yeah. She's Let's the get your bear over there. We've given that one away. I love that bear. That was a lucky person. Wasn't that precious? Mm -hmm. Well, let me make a couple of announcements that were just called in. Basin Girls Basketball will be providing a breakfast. $3 each at the Copper Basin Health Expo. Please go by and help them raise some money. And Chris Dockery called and said they will have the regular flu shot available. Um, this is for $25. They only have 60 shots, though. So a lot of people, we've been trying to find a flu shot and haven't been able to find one. Did you have one yet? No. Okay, we're gonna uh, we're gonna go right now. <laughs> we're gonna go right now, y'all. We're having some. Your sister is laughing. Your sister is laughing herself to death. We are going to share something with you now. That one night in a graveyard up in Caseville, Georgia, I met this man named Bobby Don Bloodworth, and he was doing a, a video of music, and we pulled up, and he was filming it, and we said be quiet we'll be quiet and we watched him do this video well I came in that I got his phone number and I came in the next day and I said uh, Ange we have a new guest today and you're gonna love him and, and she said who is he and I said he wrote this song about it's a Vietnam era war song and da 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 but I said he wrote another song too and she said what's the song and I said playing in the dirt again well as a child Angela had a little red wagon and I planted a million azaleas at our house at 1430 North Morningside Drive and Angela was always out there in the dirt with me and we were always listening to that jingle from Pike Nursery so so it was so cool that she was so she remembered as a child playing in the dirt again Bobby Don Bloodworth came and did the show with us that day that she was my co-host and she absolutely fell in love with him so today I want to share the song that he was doing. This was filmed in McKaysville in the cemetery overlooking Big Frog. It is an absolute statement of our, what have we done with war and what have we done with our military and, and we need to support our military and we need to support our American soldiers. So think about this, think about this and just listen to the words of this song. Um, he, he and I don't politically agree on anything, but I love him to death and, and I just, I love that I can share this song with y'all. So listen to Some Sunday by Bobby Don Bloodworth. Sunday in the morning Before daylight with little warning The guns will all go silent And our children will come home And the day will still begin And our kin will still be kin And Monday will be Monday once again Some Sunday come the daylight The truth will bathe in far away light And those who chose to close their eyes Will see the world again And our kin will still be kin And our friends will still be friends And Monday will be Monday once again Oh, some Sunday, oh, some Sunday, the sun will rise with open eyes and dare the fog to stay. Oh, some Sunday, oh, some Sunday, if we don't rise some Sunday, then we wish the world.
some Sunday hearts are pumping. We'll finally read that book we're thumping, and the pages will remind us of the promises we made. And our kin will be okay, and our friends won't be afraid, and Monday will be just another day. Oh, son. Sunday come the Savior when man shall stand for his behavior. Which part of the shall not kill? Did you not understand? And when the wayward winds of war have blown shut heaven's door, then Monday can't be Monday anymore. Oh, some Sunday. Some Sunday the sun will rise with open eyes and dare the fog to stay. Oh, some Sunday, oh, some Sunday, if we don't rise on Sunday, then we wish the world. Some Sunday in the morning, before daylight with little warning, the guns will all go silent and our children will come home. So we're back. Okay, Bobby Don Bloodworth. Angela absolutely fell in love with him. She remembered that song, Playing in the Dirt Again. When Pike Nurseries closed and went out of business, I don't know what they did with that jingle, but it is still on the Internet. You can still find it. And it was just a very simple jingle that he got royalties for for years and years and years. And it was just a simple little jingle that he wrote about playing in the dirt again. And you're a dirt player. Yes. You love gardening. You love uh, putting up corn. Good gosh, this girl puts up enough corn for Pharaoh's army. Yes. If, if uh, any of them people in the Bible need any food, you're going to be able to help them. On it. Yes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. For sure. Now, I want to, can you read one of these out of Joan's book? Because <coughs> my cousin, Joan Tinsley, was probably the cousin I was the closest to. And when she left to be with the Lord, I was a bit angry. Um, she had just gone in for some surgery. She had gone through multiple surgeries. She had had health issues for a long time, but I always expected her to come home. Yes. And when I got the call that she wasn't going to come home, I was pretty angry because she was the best. Yeah. And um, they had come and visited with us one Sunday afternoon and spent the day just talking and visiting. And I just, I never thought that would be the last day she'd be in the home. I never thought that we would never sit there again together. So let that be a lesson. <clears throat> when somebody leaves you, hug them, tell them you love them, tell them you appreciate them. Because one day they'll be gone. And I wish I had told her a million times how much I thought of her. Because I just assumed she knew. And we don't always know. We don't always know. So have you got something of her That's book you true. can read? Um, this says, uh, be the best at whatever you are. If you can't be a pine on top of the hill, be a shrub in the valley. But the best little shrub this side of the hill. Be a bush if you cannot be a tree. If you can't be a bush, be a bit of, gra of the grass. Some highway, happy, some highway happier make. If you can't be a musky than just be a bass, but the liveliest bass in the lake. We can't all be captains. We've got to be, we've got to be crew. There's something for all of us here. There's big work to do, and there's lesser to do, and the task we must do is the near. If you can't be a highway, then just be a trail. If you can't be the sun, be a star. It isn't by size that you win or you fail, be the best at whatever you are. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, That's there's some cool. cute little things in here. Well, you know, you gave me this, I think, last year on my birthday, and I always read stuff that's on here, and yes. most of the time it's very, very appropriate. So 
I want to read this one today because I think it's very, very appropriate with life today. At times, most of us resort to running away from our problems, but rather than run, we, we should press in to God. In lieu of t in lieu of tensing up, we should relax and quit fighting so hard to break away in our own strength. We need Him to get us through, but we don't turn to Him. We try to do it on our own. Yes. And <clears throat> I think we all try to do that when it's so silly and so foolish because what is that saying? Um, give your problems to God. He's going to be up all night anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we don't do that. You know, we just don't do that. It's just easier to try to fix it and try to do it and I don't know. Um, we all make those mistakes and, and yes. so it's, it's very strange when I, when I realized this morning, because somebody asked me yesterday, how long has your daughter been gone? And I said seven years. And I thought this morning, no, Sherry, that's not right. It's nine years. Yep. Nine years. And it, I was like, wow, wow. It's yep. like it was yesterday. And it's been what sixteen day before yesterday. My dad's been yeah, gone. Yeah, yep, yep. And and those days, um, the memories aren't gone, and and you don't forget, and you don't stop loving them. But I think that I'm getting stronger. Um, it's taken a long, long time to get here because there were days that I felt that I failed my child. If I, I, I think about it, I thought about it Sunday night. If I had done this, or if I'd done this, or if I'd done this, well, if I'd have done this, God's will was still going to be done. <clears throat> and I remember when I made the phone calls to my closest friends at 5.45 in the morning. I didn't want to call my closest friends at 5.45 in the morning because I knew it would hurt them to hear the news but I know if I didn't tell them, it would hurt them not to hear the news. Do you understand? Yeah. You know, because you want to share with your closest friends. And I can think of those friends as I was sitting in the chair in the position I sat for days. And they would walk in and I would see them walking by the window. And I would see them and they would come to the door and they would come in and they would come in. And they just, and they just kept coming in. You and I would not have made it through what we've made it through without those precious friends. Yes. Whether it's a phone call or a piece of cake or a, a pine of Brunswick stew or something somebody's done for us in love and as a gesture of kindness. Yes. And I said, that has, man, that has gotten me through some crazy, crazy stuff. Yes. And it's always that phone call. And I, I think about, <clears throat> a precious little lady in Rockmart who watches us all the time, and Lois Chastain has been sitting where you're sitting today, and she brought me some homemade hominy. I don't like hominy. I love I, hominy. She <laughs> loves hominy. <clears throat> I cannot eat hominy uh, under any conditions. Hominy's not my thing. Angela loved hominy. Angela would eat two orders of hominy. When Annie's had it on the menu, she'd eat two orders of hominy. And I'm sitting there, and Lois brings me this homemade hominy, and I'm like, I'm sure that was a lot of trouble to make, and I, sh I sure do appreciate it, but I don't like hominy. But I remember her precious heart. She has the kindest, sweetest heart in the world. And so when she messages me, it always lifts me. It always lifts my spirits. And Sandra Davenport, the same way, her mama and her daddy were like my parents. They weren't just my friends. They were like my parents. And so when we had to bury them in the last two years, I, I think about, was I there enough for Sandra? Because Sandra lost her real parents. They were really her parents. Was there enough for? Was I there enough for Sandra? Sandra took care of her mama 24/7 for all these years as she died of dementia. And I think about it. Was I there for Sandra? Was I there enough for Sandra? Did I help Sandra enough? Was I what I needed to be for her? There's somebody out there that we can help and we can lift their spirits. And I think that God places us here to do that. And um, I'll get a message from somebody and they'll say, well, one, she had one son, his name was Michael. And she said, at least you have another child left. And I thought, I am blessed. I am so blessed oh. because I have another child left. I lost my daughter, but she lost her only child. And um, yesterday I had a gentleman who was on the show who buried his 17 year old in a horrific car accident. And he said he was so angry and so mad, but he went to counseling. And he said the counseling truly helped me because he said, I saw in a room of 20 adults, I was not the only person who had gone through losing a child. 
and I mean I think about Linda Jordan and, and Kaylee and the moment that you get the call that your beautiful daughter who has just had an amazing wedding, an amazing day, an amazing event, the Lord called her home. How do you deal with that? You know, how do you deal with that? She has another daughter and she has grandchildren and, and so she has that happiness. But to lose your only child and or to lose the mate of 47 years that you've built your life with and cancer to rob you of that last time you have with them, yes. you know, it's just so hard. But we're not in this alone. We, no. have, we have so many friends, so many amazing people who reach out and touch us. And one of the things that we want to share at the end of today's program is a little bit of the benefit that we call it Angela's Angels. Yes. And the Barker brothers came down to play, the Kaler family came, um, oh my gosh, who else? The Partons, I love the Parton family, the Parton family was there. So many amazing people came together. Um, we had barbecue that was just fantastic. We sold plates, we had music, we sold cakes. Um, Von Seal actually made a cake. I think there's a clip of Von Seal in this. But we came together and we supported yes. each other and I think that's what we have to do. In today's world, we have a choice. We can sit here and not help somebody else or we can make a difference in their lives because somebody made a difference in our life. Yes. And I think that's so important. When you look at Dorothy Hightower, what did she bring you from? She brought you into a confidence mode that you, you can do all things through Christ. Yes. You know, you didn't think you could do anything. You'd always say, well, my sister's a smart one. My sister's this, my sister's that. Uh-uh, you've got it all. You have it all. But it took Dorothy telling you that you're a child of the king. Yes. And for you to believe that, because you didn't used to believe that. Uh-uh. And now you do. Yep. And now you do, and you know it's the truth. So we're going to yes. share a little bit of the, um, this is a benefit we did down in Jasper <coughs> for Angela, and it was called Angela's Angels. And I don't know whose music's going to come up. I don't know what's next, but to every single person who participated in that, it's been 10 years since this event, but I thank you from the bottom of my heart because every single person made a it difference. Was in, it was May 2010. Yeah, so it was 11 years. Oh, my gosh. Oh. No, 12 years. Oh my gosh, time is just going. Time is just going. Here we go. We're going to go to Angela's Angels. I think. Angie's dad's battling cancer real bad. And I know that's really tough for her to get through that. Uh, anyway, y'all just pray for us. You know what it is if you got that going on in your family. And uh, we, we covet your prayers. Uh, let's see. 
Okay, we'll do one. Uh, this is one that uh, she wrote. They won't let me do too much writing on songs. <laughs> I'm a, I've got that hillbilly. I, I speak hillbilly very fluently. And I, you don't get to put that in a song. If you don't put it on something. So, but anyway, that's okay. The good Lord knows about it. He knows what my heart is. Much less what I'm going to say down the road. But anyway, we're going to do one out. Oh, thank you, Lord. To be able to see Von Seal, cancer took her from us. She was the most amazing woman. Nobody made chicken and dressing like her. Nobody made coconut cake like her. Nobody had a heart like her. And to see that footage, that was amazing. We're going to go today as we end. I want you to read Jeremiah 29, 11 again, because I think it's something that we all need to hear and we all need to, to try and live. It says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart. I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back from your captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord and I will bring you to the place from which I cause you to be carried away captive. Jeremiah 29, 11. Yeah, that was actually very simple. through um, to 15. Yeah, very <laughs> simple. So so get your Bible out and, and read that. Yeah, that's and, a good one. And, and know that we are here another, for each other. Another one I was going to read, but you guys can look it up, um, is 2 Corinthians 5, 8. Have you, you've got time. You've got a minute. That's can you get it? That's where it talks about, um, he knows the hairs on our head. Right. I'm trying to think where Chris There you go. And he does know. He does know. Yes. Got it. Um. <laughs> we are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent. Oh, no, that's not that one. No, this is 
uh, we are confident, yes, well pleased rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. That right. wasn't the number of hairs. That's right. to be absent from this body is present with Christ. Right. I was going to say that about my sister. Right. It's actually Matthew 10:28 through 31 that talks about he knows the hair. The, mm -hmm. the hairs are numbered on her head. Right. The sparrow um, following. Mm -hmm. Do I have time? Mm, probably not today. Okay. But y'all look anyway, it up in your Matthew Bible. Matthew 10:28 through 31. Y'all uh, read that. It is very good. Yeah. That's the one where it talks about. Yeah. And know that through his strength, we can we can get through any and everything, anything we've been dealt. So um, let's do that. I'm headed to Ball Ground. You're going with us, and we're going to have a, a lunch with some dear friends, and we're going to celebrate January birthdays, and we are going to lift each other and to love each other and to encourage each other and be an encourager. Um, don't be a destroyer, be an encourager and be a light into somebody's dark life because there's somebody out there today who is struggling with the thoughts of depression, the thoughts of suicide and uh, please, please, please know that you are loved and that somebody cares for you and um, you can make a difference. Just smile, just smile, just give them a smile. Yes. And I love, I'm so glad that Joan's sweet little book, Cheers, was here to be with us today because when I think about my sweet cousin Joan, she was somebody else. Be some, someone who finds something good in each day, then give it to others. Yes. So today we're going to give it to y'all and we're going to give you something good. And she had marked where that little red thing is. I don't know uh -huh. what Let's that see, one, one more and then we got to go. Winning isn't everything, wanting to is. Yay! <laughs> see you again soon, y'all. Bye. <laughs>